Saturday night, Tracy got really drunk and gave five guys blowjobs. She had allegedly had sex with the entire St. Mary's football team. Lots of lewd acts with about 10 or 15 different guys. Seriously, it's true. I mean, she hung out with all the guys on the football team. She had to be a slut. Who is to blame if young people respond to this pressure? I think it had to do with the way she dressed. Evidence of the pressure is plentiful almost anywhere you go. She's the loose girl, you know, we all did her. She's a slut. We can't stand it. We can't bring her home to our mom and dad. Girls also have sex drives. Like she was coming out of the boys' locker room. Come on. She may not realize how much the way she dresses and behaves excites you sexually. The slut was the girl who stole my grade seven boyfriend. What a slut. <laughs> <laughs> Every high school has one. She's the girl we whispered about, who supposedly did all of those things. She was the one with the bad reputation, the one who was labeled the slut. She would go on to claim mythical status, and even after all of these years, we still remember her name. But where is she now? How would she remember high school? documentary on the myth of the teenage slut. Well, I myself wasn't a slut in high school, but a lot of people thought I was, which was kind of ironic considering the fact that I was still a virgin. Calling someone a slut, it kind of breaks them. When I got labeled as a slut, I'd never even kissed anyone before in my life. I hadn't even done anything. Sex was st still really confusing to me. Like, I was 13 when I started getting rumors, like, when people started telling rumors about me, and I didn't really understand it at all. It kind of went from me being innocent in the whole deal and kind of being like the victim of rumors to actually creating that persona in myself, and that's when things got really bad. He's a little slut, actually. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're promiscuous. Oh, I know. It's OK. You can be whoever you want. It's me and my son when he was five months old. I went to a new school for grade seven, and they decided to pick on me. They just started calling me a slut, and then when they realized it bothered me, they called me it more, and I was very shy, and I lived in a group home, which didn't help my reputation at all, because, oh, she lives in a group home, well, then she must, there's got to be something wrong with her. And it was weird. They would all call me a slut, and then I'd go home to my group home, and I'd be the only girl there that never had sex or even kissed a guy, and so they would pick on me for being a prude. And then at school, I'd get picked on for being a slut. So it was really weird. It was a really weird environment that I grew up. One minute I'm a prude, next minute I'm a slut. Like, I was never sure where I was. I was more of a prude now that I look back on it. People looked at me like I was less than them, a lot less. I don't think anyone deserves to be called a slut. Well, the way that I got my reputation was because um, I just dated a lot of people very frequently, and they all assumed that I was a slut, and that was easy. I just dated a lot. I mean, I was going out with a lot of guys, so it was easy for them to assume, like, they don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So they let their minds wander on what to, and they think what they want to think. I got the vibe essentially and I could tell it just by the way people were looking at me and I could hear people talking about me and I've had a few people tell it to me to my face. It was just basically a bunch of name calling and a lot of people stopped hanging out with me. It kind of made me feel worthless and like horrible. 
why bother with things like my marks weren't that great after I was being labeled this. good grades, teachers think you're fine, which I think is a mistake, because some of the overachievers are the ones who are having the most troubles. I was the one who started, like after the first time I had sex with a guy, when I was 11, I was the one who came back to school and said, hey, I just had sex with this guy, la la la, never thinking that it would spread like wildfire and by the afternoon his girlfriend would be coming to get me and beat me up after school. And by Friday, it was the biggest. Like, I got surrounded by seven girls, and they were burning my jacket, and they, like, tripped me off a curb. I got kicked in the jaw. It was awful, like the worst beat up I ever had. Dear Dan, I'm writing you this because I'm having a problem at school. Everyone keeps calling me a slut, but I haven't even kissed anyone yet. I hear mostly a lot from young people. You know, people whose uh, uh, genitals are just kicking into high gear are likelier to be confused and need advice and reach out for advice. So I hear from a lot of teenagers and younger. And, you know, I get letters from 13-year-olds, 12-year-olds that are wondering about things that I didn't wonder about until I was 28. Have you heard that Jeannie Dallin did a teacher? No, seriously. The reality is high school is horrifying and kids are cruel and hierarchies are going to emerge. It's horrifying. What can you do for the 14-year-old girl in her high school who has been labeled a slut? Nothing. That's part of the sort of torment of it. It's almost as if anything adults step in to try to do to make it better is only going to make it worse. When I was 14 years old, I became known as the school slut. I went out on a date with a guy whom my girlfriend had her eye on. And in my defense, all I can say is that I was 14 years old, and when you're 14, you do selfish, foolish things like this. Well, the guy wanted to make out with me. So we went to his apartment, his parents weren't there, and we fooled around. He was not exactly a gentleman about it. He, as soon as the date was over, he called my girlfriend and told her what happened. She was so angry with me that she decided to go to school the next day and tell everybody what I had done. And she embellished the story. Within a matter of hours, people were coming up to me, calling me slut, um, calling me bitch, and whispering behind my back. This harassment, it persisted for three and a half years. I got the reputation without doing anything. Margaret is a slut. I was very lonely. I was always alone. Well, in the spring of 1940, my mother died. And um, that was when war was starting. And uh, I had one brother. So once the summer holidays came, my father found an apartment in Kitsilano area of Vancouver. So that meant going to Kitsilano High School. Popularity. What is it people like one person and not another? They, they were all set up. I mean, they'd been going to school with people for 12 years and they didn't need a newcomer. I'd made the mistake of going to a party I was invited to and they were, there was a little porch off the, the room where the dancing was going on and someone said someone wanted me out on the porch so I went out on the porch and just got sort of sexual standing up and hanging on to me for dear life and I couldn't get away until he was finished and then I ran home. I wondered if there was a sign in the bathroom wall in the boys room. That would have said what? Margaret is a slut. 
When I became 17, I had lost my virginity and it was great. I had a good first experience and I just became very, very promiscuous and ultimately had sex with thousands of people in all different kinds of ways. I admired uh, the bad girls in the high school. It's just a four-letter word, but to be labeled a slut can change your high school career, if not your whole life. Can we even define what a slut is? Is it a word to keep high school girls in check? To prevent them from going too far? Or does it define a woman who feels comfortable expressing her sexual identity? I was really super shy as a teenager and very afraid of sex, but my first experience was so good and so liberating uh, that I just wanted to learn more about sex. I have a slut collection. You won't see that on the Home Shopping Club, though. Well, there's a kind of classic slut, which is just a very lusty, available, sexually open, juicy woman. And there are certain garments and types of makeup. They're kind of the stereotypical slut. Blue eyeshadow, lots of rouge, red lips, uh, garter belt, stockings, high heels, playboy bunnies, porn stars, pinup models. These are kind of the classic sluts. However, in some cases, you could just not be a virgin on your wedding night and you're considered a slut. I didn't know what a slut was. I knew, I knew it must be somebody that's sexually promiscuous, but I, I completely wasn't. And so I always thought it must be me. I must act a certain way. I must flirt with guys and I don't even know it. I think it's like, I don't even know. If I were to make up a definition for slut, I wouldn't even know what, how, like what to say, how to define it. Girls who either are very sexually active or they are perceived to be more sexually active than their peers are. So that could be a girl who has never had sex. She may never have even kissed a boy, but people think she's very sexually active. A girl who is just considered an outsider, for whatever reason. It could be a girl who's new in school. She could be an early developer, somebody who gives off a sexual impression. So if, you know, everybody else in school is still in their, you know, A cup bra, and there's one girl in seventh grade who's wearing a C cup, God help her, because people are going to assume that she's sexually active. A girl who is really, really pretty, is often a target of jealousy by other girls especially and it works I felt like, always like there was something wrong with me I was afraid to show myself. My mom was very sort of sensuous and sexually expressive. And that's, you know, uh, she was like a 50s bombshell, Marilyn Monroe type of woman. And um, she was actually quite noticeable. And I partly picked up a lot of her mannerisms. I wasn't aware what I was projecting. And um, I remember being at my locker and noticing some guys talking about me across the hall. And I um, walked down the hall and they said things behind my back. I felt very isolated. And that's one of the things that I, I uh, the dysfunctional way I continued on in my life was to feel this, I, this um, isolation. The most disturbing of all is a girl who's been raped or who has been um, involved in a sexually coercive encounter. And those stories are really, really heartbreaking. I was sexually attractive at a fairly young age. 
my body was the focus of attack and stigmatization. When I was 11 years of age, uh, I was sexually assaulted. And I was sexually assaulted by a boy who was quite a bit older than me. And um, it, it, was, it, was a, it was an awful, it was a horrible experience. This was a guy whose mother drove me to church on Sundays. He asked me if I wanted to go for a bike ride with him. And I was, you know, I was kind of excited and delighted. And then he, he assaulted me. And then when it was over, he said, Michelle, I didn't know you were that kind of girl. Sometime later, I would say probably about a year later, with my girlfriend, I found that underneath this huge bridge that we were canoeing and we got out of the canoe and spent some time under this bridge with these big rocks and boulders, I found graffiti about myself. She and I found that said for a good fuck, call Michelle Dora, my phone number. I wanted to die. That's how bad it was. This is also from the 30s. Like this. And this one's supposed to be like this. And then you can wear it a variety of ways. You can wear it like this. I like to wear my hands off to the side like this. I got my reputation because I was a slut. Sex was nothing to me. It was something to do. It was a way to, um, it was a way to get what you wanted. If it were attention, good or bad, if it were later on gas in your car, if it were weed in your pipe, a uh, ride to the beach, whatever, it was five minutes out of my day. It started because um, I'd been having sex since I was a little kid, uh, unbeknownst to me, from someone in my family. And uh, I figured out really early that if I was gonna have to do that anyways, I might as well do it and get something for it. And I figured out, obviously, early on that this is what men wanted, and this is what people did, and quid pro quo, this is, this is how you got something, be it out of the situation I were in, or more money, or whatever. That's, that's how it started. Uh, I have no shame about it. Not one fucking ounce of shame. The only shame I have is that I fell into being this type of person because of how I grew up. That's my only smidgen of shame. And again, it's not my fault what happened to me and how I turned out and whatever else, you know, so. Everyone was screwing, but I was the only one that admitted it. Yeah, I remember this girl in high school. Oh my God, she was labeled a slut. That's so gross, it makes me sick. It begins with a rumor and blossoms into a legend. Maybe she was the new transfer student, or the girl with the pretty hair, or the one who hung out with the guys. But now, she's someone else entirely, and whoever she once was is replaced by this myth. Yeah, when I was in high school, I heard a rumor about a girl that at a party slept with three guys at the same time, and they were all brothers. Apparently, there's this girl who did it on a bedpost. I have heard about some girl who did the football team at another school, the entire team. There's a girl who's about to turn 17, and the rumor was that her goal was 17 guys by seven, her 17th birthday. There was a rumor in my junior high that um, one of my classmates was pregnant, and she was like 13, so she was considered to be the class slut. There were definitely girls I interviewed who were promiscuous, and there were girls I interviewed who were virgins. The one thing they all had in common was that they'd never done exactly what everybody said they did, you know? Um, so the, the stories were lived separately from the sexual realities of these girls' lives. The rumors um, were very, very similar across time and across geography, so that I talked to like a 14-year-old girl and a 50-year-old woman who had both been the object of like the exact same rumor, she gives blowjobs for cigarettes, was the rumor. It's this whole football team thing. Well, by like the fifth interview, we were like, has this ever happened except in a porno movie? Because <laughs> all of them were saying, I didn't do it. There's no privacy and there's no control over how you're identified at all because it's not just like a social ostracism, like you're a freak, it's sexual, so it's about your body, it's about what you were doing that's wrong with your body. It was just basically a bunch of name calling and a lot of people stopped hanging out with me. And after like I lost a few friends, I just sheltered into myself and 
didn't talk to many people. She can't really be part of a crowd because girls are afraid they'd be selected by association. So she has to be alone because if you're with her, you could be one too. There was one rumor that um, I gave some guy head at like 4.30 in the afternoon in Queen Street outside of a corner store, which is just, it's like him sitting on a bench like this in the middle of the streets, just ridiculous. Uh, that was probably the wildest rumor. Boys used to come and knock at my door that I'd never seen in my life before and ask me to go for a ride. Now, of course, I didn't go, but uh, after a while, I began to realize there was something fishy going on. They were calling me fast. That was the word, fast. I was known as the fast girl. And uh, when I got to be about a preteen, about 12, 11-ish, totally by the time I was 13, mothers were keeping their daughters away from me because I was a fast girl who didn't have a mother, therefore had no supervision. When a girl is called a slut, it can affect her in different ways. The way it 